What's up, my loves? My name is Kirsten, also known as Love Lewis, and this is another episode of Godversations, where we don't just talk about God. This is not that kind of show, but we do talk about a few tough, tight, and tempting topics that we can still find God in. Now, in this episode, we're going to talk about how God told me to move to Atlanta. The update. Stay tuned. Cast away all fear, so if you're looking for love, you'll find it here. But before we get started, soul check, how is your soul today? Now, if you don't know what soul check is or what it means, I need you to go back, uh huh, skate on back to that little link. Maybe it's up here, maybe it's up here, one of the, it don't matter. I need you to go back and check on that video. And tell me how your soul is doing. How are you managing? How are you navigating? And for me, with all these transitions that have been going on in my life so far, my soul has been all over the place. My mind has been real foggy lately. Wondering what direction my life is going in. Making sure that the knowledge of my mind coincides with the knowledge of my spirit. For a little while, there was a disconnect, if I can be real with y'all. And emo, <sighs> child, emo has been giving me all kind of issues, as always. But my encouragement is to remember that, that if I remain in him, he will remain in me. So my goal is to always let him in so that he can remain in me. And that was my problem. So how is your soul doing today? Oh, all right. Let's just, let's just talk about it. I can very much so glamorize all of this. I promise you I could. And pretend that this has been a walk in the park, but I'm not going to sit here and do y'all like that. This transition was hard. I moved to another state at the age of 25, having never did anything like this alone before. And it broke my heart. If you want me to be completely honest with you, this journey and this transition has probably been one of the hardest transitions I've ever had to face. And even visiting old friends, whenever I go back to town to visit, a lot of them said, you look different. (laughs) You look like you grew up. And to be honest, I was like, because I did. Quite honestly, I figured that since... Alabama and Georgia were right next to each other, then there wouldn't be so big of a culture shock. (sighs) Y'all, there was so much that I did not know. I am big on the whole Southern hospitality, making people feel at home, making people feel needed, wanted, all of that good stuff. And here in Atlanta and these surrounding areas, honey, I have met a little bit of everybody. My first month here, I decided to get a lay of the land. So I started doing a little, you know, sightseeing, go out, meet some new people, open my eyes and experience some of the Atlanta life that everybody is raving about. And seeing all of these cultures and lifestyles was very interesting to me. When I first got here, driving down I-85, I I remember looking over in another lane and seeing this extended pink Mercedes limo. And I said, oh, okay. And I went from seeing that to also seeing homeless and disabled people. Living on the street, probably the most heartbreaking first impressions was seeing um, some homeless men sleeping on the stoop of a closed church. On my first day, that was a little to take in. (laughs) By the time I'm recording this, it would have been seven months of me living in Atlanta and the surrounding areas. When I moved here, uh, I was not promised a job. I was not promised nobody's position or career of any sort. I just stepped out on faith and I rented a room in Decatur. I stayed there 
for three months that turned into six. And I spent the first two months without a job until the Lord was kind enough to show me where my job would be. Granted, I could have had it sooner, but I was a little stubborn and a little prideful, was living off of my savings. Eventually, of course, that money started to dry up. And also there were so many unexpected expenses that came about that started to dwindle my account down some more. And this was after the Lord showed me where I was supposed to work, but I was just apprehensive. I was very, very apprehensive and very uh, protective of myself. Um, (laughs) And a little judgmental, I ain't gonna hold you. I've never worked in that kind of environment before, so I'm just not going to take that chance. And plus, I believe that I deserve better. But after telling God about how prideful I was being, he let my bank account get touched a little bit. And by a little bit, I mean I was in the negative. (laughs) I decided to reach out to the place where God showed me and I started working. He was trying to get me acclimated into the culture as safely as possible (laughs) while also giving me the provision that I needed to sustain. I've met quite a few personalities while working there. I've met famous rappers that you see on TV and on hit records and all that good stuff. I've seen reality stars. I've seen uh, social media influencers, the TikTokers. I have seen all of the kind of people that most people would deem famous. But as I met those people, I also met Miss Deborah that worked at the Dollar Tree next door. I would see her every day whenever I went to go buy me some snacks. I also met Miss Queenie, who who would always come into the store causing some type of trouble because she couldn't get what she wanted at the price that she wanted. (laughs) And I also met Mr. Mike, an older vet who always wanted me to speak to him, but at the same time would never speak back when I decided to. I've met people from so many different walks of life, and I'm grateful for that job that allowed me to. And so for the next six months, I worked for that small business. I have seen the beauty and the beast of ATL, and not just the beauty and the beast of ATL, but also the beauty and the beast of me. I I didn't know this transition would have taken such a toll on me. And so despite all of the beauty that you see right here, because this right here is, this thing is thangin'. (laughs) There were a few beasts that the Lord needed to address in me. I figured rather than sugarcoat how this journey has been going so far, I'll give y'all what's real. And what's true? Don't get me wrong. There have been a lot of blessings, but transitions are difficult. And I honestly would not dare use my influence to sugarcoat this entire experience. When my account went into the negative, I grew numb, cold, callous, and I was borderline suicidal. I was very resentful towards God because I didn't understand why he was calling me to be uprooted from everything that I had known and let me come to this place, this this land that he has shown me all alone. Felt like I was doing all of this by myself. And to be honest, I had reached a point to where I didn't want to do it anymore. I contemplated going back home. I contemplated closing this chapter and pretending it never happened. And when I realized that the Lord wasn't going to let me go, I had strongly considered letting myself go. And I'll never forget how that made him feel. And of course, I'm going to expound upon that in another video. But needless to say, he definitely shared a lot of his heart to me about how he feels about suicide. And ever since that day, (laughs) I chose not to put that word in his face like that ever again but I was very upset and I acted out in a few ways that I know I shouldn't have if it had not been for that kind of friction I would not have realized how dependent I was on money 
and how much I saw money as my backup plan and how much I consulted my bank account more than I consulted the father about any decisions that I wanted to make or should be making. Next, there was also a period where I was extremely adamant on clearing up my skin. I suffered heavily with breakouts and dark marks and scarring. That's why I'm mad proud of my skin right now because in previous videos you can always see the scarring and so I'm super proud that it's gotten better. But in the early stages of this whole journey, I decided to try this chemical called lactic acid and I looked at the reviews and they said that it worked really good and how it cleared up your dark marks, cleared up your skin, so on and so forth. But one thing I was leery of was how there weren't enough melanated witnesses. Uh, I did see one person that tried it, loved it, and so I started just putting it on my face every day or every night. And as time went on, I started noticing these weird red rashes they were inflamed they were irritating and they spread quickly and they took three weeks at a time to heal whenever they manifested for lack of better words and I had to deal with that for maybe three months but if I had not have gone through that kind of suffering I would not have understood how impulsive I was, how quick I can be. And that God taught me patience. In that moment, I, I distinctly remember the Lord showing me that every sensation, every desire, every opportunity is not necessarily an itch. And also in the same right, every itch, every desire, every opportunity is not meant to be scratched. And so that was the revelation I got from there. And I know for a fact, if I would not have gone through that phase of irritation, skin issues, all of that disheartening uh, stuff, I would not have learned to be still sometimes. And that's what makes me appreciate it all the more. And in the event of all these things occurring, I would not have known where my breaking point was and I would not have gotten a therapist. Investing in a therapist was by far the best decision that I've ever made in my adulthood. She has helped me navigate through all of these transitions and she has made me feel extremely okay <laughs> with the uncommonness that is my life and my circumstances. So just to put a pin in all of this, get a therapist. But by far, one of probably the most ghetto experiences that I've had living in another state thus far is having a full-time job, having all the money that you need to afford a decent place to stay. And because of their requirements, they can't let you in. <laughs> Do you know how weird that is to have money, to have the resources to afford a place to stay, a place of your own and can't even get in? I was homeless for about two months. My lease at the other place was starting to um, end and I was having a hard time getting accepted into these other places for some reason. I told the Lord what I wanted. I told the Lord what I was looking for. In my head, I just assumed that he was working on my behalf. I just decided to stick it out. I started living in an Airbnb. I was hotel hopping for two weeks, drained my savings yet again, and I slept in my car. It got to that point. And one of the biggest mistakes that I made in that process was lying to those that I loved to spare them of their feelings. One of my biggest fears would be disappointing people, like failure. For me, which caused a lot of pride up in here, admitting to other people that I am less than good in a situation because I'm typically the type of person that likes to have it all figured out. And in this time frame, I didn't. So many people called me and checked on me 
just to check in. And I always said, yeah, I'm okay. With tears in my eyes, with a knot in my throat, trying to keep from sobbing, I lied (laughs) and said that I was okay, that I didn't need any help, that everything was fine. And the night before, I had slept in my car. Needless to say, when I told my therapist this, she could have cussed me out. Not because I was struggling, but because I didn't say anything. And because I let it go on for this long. And I ain't gonna hold you, I manifested. I was a weeping mess because I was holding so, so much onto pride that I didn't want to address my potential, what could be a potential failure to others. After I got scolded, (laughs) I called everyone that I had lied to, and I told them the truth. And it was probably the most freeing feeling. I genuinely felt like I had went through deliverance. I felt like a weight had been lifted and that I could finally move forward in life. And and just like that, a friend of a friend of a friend (laughs) reached out to me and said that someone that they knew knew somebody that was looking for a roommate, and it had everything that I asked God for all because I decided to put my pride away and let somebody, anybody know that I needed help and help is what I got. So seriously, ever since I have moved to the good old city of Atlanta, Georgia and surrounding areas, it has been a challenge, but it was growing pains and I honestly do not regret any of it. Because it's starting to show me who I am and who I am becoming. And I ain't gonna hold y'all. After all this time of being here, I did not feel like I was operating in anything that the Lord said that I would be. But that's when he blew my mind. I just received probably... The best news that I've ever, that I've ever received. 